Hey Wildcats, I look like a mess because I am a mess. Um, my biological family's on their way here to help clean out the barn so that our field trip looks pretty tomorrow. We'll see if it actually happens. It's awfully wet. As you can imagine, I'm feeling really stressed, so I've been using some coping skills. I've been using the llamas. I've been using some deep breathing, making sure that I'm like getting sufficient oxygen up to my brain so that my frontal cortex can make some good decision making or I can have some good decision making processes. Drinking a lot of coffee, keep me in good spirits, and I hope that you guys are having a great kind of wet, misty day. I'm going to read for about 10 minutes right now, and then this afternoon I'm going to read for about 10 to 20, and then this evening I'm going to read for 20. So, chapter 16, Professor Trelawney's Prediction. Harry's euphoria, euphoria is like this awesome feeling that you have, like it's like when you win the game and you've got that great feeling or like you've got an A on that test that you studied for or that really really good feeling that like nothing can bring you down like when people say they're floating on cloud nine they are euphoric they're feeling euphoria Harry's euphoria at finally winning the Quidditch Cup lasted at least a week even the weather seemed to be celebrating as June approached the days became cloudless and sultry and all anybody felt like doing was strolling into the grounds and flopping down on the grass with several pints of iced pumpkin juice, perhaps playing a casual game of gobstones or watching the giant squid propel itself dreamily across the surface of the lake. But they couldn't. The exams were nearly upon them, and instead of lazying around outside, the students were forced to remain inside the castle, trying to bully their brains into concentrating, while enticing wafts of summer air drifted in through the windows. Even Fred and George Weasley had taken had been spotted working. They were about to take their OWLs, ordinary wizarding levels, which are like big tests. Percy was getting ready for his newts, nastily exhausting wizarding tests, the highest qualification Hogwarts offers. As Percy hoped to enter the Ministry of Magic, he needed top grades. He was becoming increasingly edgy and gave very severe punishments to anybody who disturbed the quiet of the common room in the evenings. In fact, the only person who seemed more anxious than Percy Weasley was, you guessed it, Hermione Granger. Harry and Ron had given up asking her how she was managing to attend several classes at once, but they couldn't restrain themselves when they saw her exam schedule that she had drawn up for herself. The first column read, Monday, 9 o'clock a.m., Arithmancy, 9 o'clock a.m., Transfiguration, Lunch, 1 o'clock p.m., Charms, 1 o'clock p.m., Ancient Runes. Hermione, Ron, sh Ron said cautiously, because she was liable to explode when interrupted these days, uh, are, are you sure you wrote down your schedule right? What? snapped Hermione, picking up her exam schedule and, and looking it over. Yes, of course I have. Uh, is there any point in asking how you're going to be in two exams at the same time? Said Harry. No, said Hermione shortly. Have either of you seen my copy of Numerology and Grammaticia? Grammatica? I'm sorry, Numerology and Grammatica? It's a book title. I'm really sorry. Oh, yeah. I borrowed it for, I borrowed that one a bit for some light bedtime reading, said Ron, sarcastically, but very quietly. Hermione started shifting heaps of paper around her table, looking for the book. Just then there was a rustle at the window, and Hedwood fluttered through it, a note clutched tightly in her beak. It's from Hagrid, said Harry, ripping the note open. Buckbeat's appeal. It's set for the sixth. That's the day we finish our exam, said Hermione, still looking everywhere for her arithmancy book. And they're coming up here to do it, said Harry, still reading the letter. Someone from the Ministry of Magic and, and an executioner. That's the person who... Hermione looked up, startled. They're bringing the executioner to the appeal? But, but that sounds as though they've already decided. Yeah, it does, said Harry. They can't run how I've spent ages reading up on stuff for Hagrid. They can't just ignore all the work that I've done. But Harry had a horrible feeling that the Committee for the Disposal of Dangerous Creatures had its mind made up for them by Mr. Malfoy. Draco, 
who had been noticeably subdued since Gryffindor's, which means like quiet or calm, not as obvious or loud, since Gryffindor's triumph in the Quidditch final, seemed to regain some of his old swagger over the next few days from sneering comments Harry overheard. Malfoy was certain Buckbeak was going to be killed, and seemed thoroughly pleased with himself for bringing it upon him. It was all Harry could do to stop himself from, to stop himself imitating Hermione and hitting Malfoy in the face on these occasions. And the worst thing of all was that they had no time or opportunity to go see Hagrid because of the strict new security measures had not been lifted and Harry didn't dare retrieve his invisibility cloak from below the one-eyed witch. Ex <clears throat> Exam week began and an unnatural hush fell over the castle. The third years emerged from transfiguration at lunchtime on Monday, limp and ashen-faced, comparing results and bemoaning the difficulty of the tasks that they had been assigned, which had included turning a teapot into a tortoise. Hermione, irritated by the, re by the fussing about how her tortoise had looked more like a turtle, which was the least of everyone else's worries. Mine still had a spout for a tail. What a nightmare. Were the tortoises supposed to breathe steam? Someone asked. It still had a willow pattern shell. Do you think that'll count against me? Then, after a hasty lunch, it was straight back upstairs for the charms exams. Hermione had been right. Professor Flitwick did indeed test them on cheering charms. Harry slightly overdid his out of nerves, and Ron, who was partnering him, ended up in fits of hysterical laughter and had to be led away to a quiet, <laughs> to a quiet room for an hour before he was ready to perform the charm himself. <laughs> so basically, Harry overdid it so hard that Ron was hysterically laughing, not just cheerful. After dinner, the students hurried back to their common rooms, not to relax, but to start revising for the care of magical creatures, potions, and astronomy tests. Hagrid presided over care of magical creatures exam the following morning with a very preoccupied air indeed. His heart didn't seem to have been in it at all. He, was pro he provided a large tub of fresh flobberworms from the class and told them that to pass their test, their flobberworms had to still be alive at the end of one hour. As flobberworms flourished best if left to their own devices, it was the easiest exam any of them have ever been to, and also gave Harry, Ron, and Hermione plenty of opportunity to speak to Hagrid. Beaky's getting a bit depressed, Hagrid told them, bending low to the pretense of checking that Harry's flobberworm was still alive. Been cooped up too long, but still, we'll know the day after tomorrow one way or the other. They had potions that afternoon, which was an unqualified disaster. Try as Harry might, he couldn't get his confusing concoction to thicken, and Snape, standing watching with an air of vindictive pleasure, scribbled something that looked suspiciously like a zero on his notes before moving away. Then came astronomy at midnight, up on the tallest tower, history of magic on Wednesday morning, in which Harry scribbled everything Florine Flirt Fortescue had ever told him about medieval witch hunts. Remember, that's the guy that has the ice cream shop? in Diagon Alley, and Harry was there all summer long because of all the drama going on with Sirius Black, and the Minister of Magic made him stay in Diagon Alley where he'd be protected, and he had ice cream there, and then that guy was telling him all about the history of magic. Oh, it came in useful on his exams. All right. In which Harry scribbled everything Florine Fortescue had ever told him about medieval witch hunts while wishing he could have one of Fortescue's choco-nut sundaes with him in the stifling hot classroom. Wednesday afternoon met Herbology in the greenhouse under a baking hot sun, then back to the common room once more with the backs of their necks sunburnt, thinking longly of the time next week when all of these tests would be over. I've got to stop there. I can hear them pulling into my driveway. Wish me luck. <laughs>